Hey everybody, welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people with relatable content and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry. And I'm Lily. And she's in a really good mood today. <laughs> Before we go any further, don't forget to click on that subscribe button and also click on the bell notification. That way when we are doing our thing, YouTube lets you know. Today we're going to continue Lily's top 50 board games of all time, counting down which numbers? 40 to 30, no I'm sorry, to 41, right? 40, 40 through 31. 40 to 31. I'm sorry. No bloopers. We're keeping this going. <laughs> All right, Lily, let's go straight for it. Number 40, 40 is. All right. So, number 40 is Catan. Yay! Yay! <laughs> How the mighty have fallen. Let's do a moment of silence for Catan. That's it. It's done. It's oh. over. <laughs> Catan used to be our number one game of all time. It actually was our gateway game that got us into gaming. We um we were before our children were born uh very bored and some really cool some really cool people when we lived in Maine introduced us to um to Catan. So yeah, we've actually since then uh, owned a couple versions of it. We had the two player version, the right, card Katan, version. Yep. yep. Was there a dice version ever? There is, but you have never played it. I mean, it's just like a great gateway game for anybody that's that's willing to give it a try. Heck, anybody that's not even gamed before, it's a way, it's a great well, a great way for you to um to get introduced to it. Um, so anyway, we've played it with uh, all sorts of people. It get, it gets a little long when you have multiple players, like up to four players will be max because then really it drags on for over two hours. Sure, sure. So, I mean, but it's, it's otherwise really great, and it's, it's about trading. It's uh, more in the European style of games. And this is the only box we own till this day. My gosh, we obviously own way more. <laughs> so, Catan. Hooray for yes. trusty Catan. And last year, this was ranked number 31 on your list, so it has dropped down a bit. I guess Nostalgia is doing its thing because it's never I'm not sure if it. you played this game in the entire calendar year this past I year. I haven't. But and yet it stays at number 40. It has a very dear place in my heart. All right. You know? Let's move on to your number 39. <laughs> my number 39. A game I was introduced to this year, right? Yes, it's new to the list this year. Patchwork. Patchwork. So Patchwork is a, like a Tetris type game where you get to build your own quilt. Mm -hmm. It's like three-dimensional you know you score based on your buttons according on the amount of buttons it goes around in a clockwise motion and it has this little worker that jumps according to the die Does it? um the worker always moves Certain to amount. the place that you uh drafted the tile from yeah but you only have and like you only have the three. first three after are available three. to be drafted Something yes, like that. Or there was no to be purchased because there's a price for them yeah so you're trying to make it so it's a nice tight grid and if you make it into like a perfect square or whatnot you score a certain amount of points of like x amount of squares times x amount of squares. that you're thinking of patchwork doodle am i not but, but yeah. this one doesn't well this too. one you're just trying to occupy as much space as possible I could have sworn this patchwork one doodle you score for your biggest um okay. your biggest square here you score for your buttons your buttons are your points you're okay. trying to accumulate as much buttons as possible and then you subtract every space that you were not able to occupy on your grid there's a reason why it's number 39 so either way it is a great game. great game yeah. great game great quick game for a night that you've worked two player only two player only perfect for harry and i and even though i'm not into quilting this is uh the as close as i'm ever gonna get so patchwork try it all right love it and again this was new to our list this year let's see what number 38 is number 38 Number 38, it is representing from my hometown of Santiago de Cuba. Wow. This was Harry's birthday gift to me a couple years ago, right? Like yeah, 20... like three years ago. Yeah, three years. I don't know. It was, it was very early on in our board game hobby expanding. Mm -hmm. And he figured, how can I get Lily into gaming? Well, I'm going to try to connect with her every which way. And lo and behold, this is an out of print edition right in spanish well yeah i think it still might be in print from the spanish publisher ludanova but it was originally in print i think for north american distributors but for whatever reason uh you can't really find it 
Uh, but I was able to get it in Spanish, which is very convenient because it's Santiago de it Cuba. And that's the language they speak exactly. there. Exactly. So it's really cool. I actually, I, I go back and forth between this one and another favorite of mine that you may end up playing with. I wonder what spoilers which, alert, right? But I feel like this one is so cool. It only has the morro, or we call it like the, um, I don't even know the translation for that. <laughs> but it's like the bay area that has like a stone-like structure where people go and either stand or trade or whatnot. And they have ships coming in, and the ships have cargo, and the cargoes are represented by dice, and the dice have different colors and numbers. And those dice and those colors and numbers represent um, different uh, resources that you collect as you go around the island trading with the different people. So, um, you know, you get to practice your Spanish. There is uh, pa Paolo, Conchita, you know, and there is a trusty uh, Pedro and El Zorro. Mm. For those of you who never watched that. So it's really great. It's based out of like 1800, Santiago. Yeah, turn of the century, 19th, early. Before communism. Yeah. So for those of you who have nostalgia. <laughs> the embargo does not affect it. Yes. Fun <laughs> game, fun game. This was actually ranked number 13 on your list last year. So it's dropped quite a bit, but hey, number 38 still hanging in a little bit. It has. It's another one that I'll probably keep on because of nostalgia mostly. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean. Hey, we've had, we've had a fun time playing it. We have. All We're right. We're going to get back to it. You know what? Let's play it right now. <laughs> oh, back after these commercial breaks. And my number 37 is Pandemic the Cure, which okay. is essentially the dice version of Pandemic where you're going around um, in this uh, circular motion trying to combat the dyes that are collecting that are representing the virus. Mm -hmm. The dyes have different colors and they have different numbers and you're trying to gather samples and treat with your specialized, um, what, what do you call that? The dice, every every character, character. everybody has a special character and special that character. gives them a unique set of customized dice. Isn't it a two-player game? No, we've only played two player, but this is playing four player, and I think that's one of the reasons why we haven't won. It's because you need more players for it to be easier. It's it's really, really tough at two. We have not found a cure as of yet, but do not despair. We are working really hard. <laughs> so that is my number 37. For your safety, <laughs> folks. Yes, and make sure that as you're handling it, you're having facial uh, shields and wearing a mask. <laughs> hint, hint. Right. Number 37, new to the list this year, Pandemic to Cure. All right, what's your number 36, Lily? My number 36 and somebody else's number very, very high is... Spoilers! How dare you? Kingsburg! <laughs> All right, good game. Kingsburg. Really, really good game. I gotta say, Harry here went on a little tangent there and watched like every medieval show uh, <laughs> inspired by this game, so... I don't know if this game has inspired any shows. Maybe some shows have inspired this game, but not the other way around. Yeah. Um, anyway, this is a very intricate type of game that feels like there's a lot to learn. But once you really learn it, it's kind of like riding a bike and it goes by yeah. pretty quick. But there is a lot of moving pieces. You have two boards, one where things are collected and the other one that you're, every player has where you're trying to advance from the left to, to the right. You're trying to build buildings with the different resources. And you're also trying to score the resources based on your right on your rolling of your die. You're also going through the seasons of the castle, and the king might bestow things on you or not, right? So you're going through like summer, spring, fall, winter, so on and so forth. How many seasons are there? There's four. There's, There's four, four seasons. seasons. But only three of them are action seasons. The winter season is really just to have an attack. You're <laughs> gonna get attacked by a different army. Of fantastical creatures and one of the things yourself. you got to do is you got to prepare your military strength to be able to withstand the onslaught of these attacks I find it to be so dynamic I, I don't think I would ever get bored of this game it's just it's a great game really it, cool. it's on the lighter end of the worker placement games it's a dice placement game you're rolling dice and your dice are your workers well, you're picking up real resources but it works yes but you're re real resources wooden but um <laughs> the wood is real that's for sure um, we're, I, I wouldn't buy anything with that gold, but it's a, it's a good game. It's, um, again, for whatever reason, it just, it resonates with me. It clicks with me. And, uh, apparently for you, it's not doing too bad either. Not too shabby. It's not. It's Number not. 36. I guess like we just played a couple games that I find to be similar in theme. So they kind of like sure. intertwine, but out of all the games that were like 
King Arthur yeah. type. Yeah. Thematically thing, speaking, thing. it's it's forgettable. It's forgettable. It is. Uh, this one is definitely the one that stands. Out. I I can remember like at least four games that we played that were like in the theme that you're mentioning. Yeah. So this one definitely stands out. If anybody knows me or has seen the previous videos, I'm all about the tactile experience and picking up the actual resources. I don't do well when the resources are like a number and a board, you know? <laughs> uh, but if I can gather them, I just want to feel like I have something, you know? Sure. So this one actually makes you feel like you have stuff. And eventually you collect so many uh, buildings. You build the buildings. You have to build the previous building before you move on. And if you do so, then um, then you score those little um, victory points that are represented by the red mm -hmm. marker uh, of each building. My number 36, Kingsburg. Great game. Try Good it game. out. Good game. Good game. All right. So what's your number 35? My number 35, because I'm Cuban and I like a domino, it is not a surprise that I like King Domino. Hey. All Caribbeans should, should own this game, people. It's very bright. It's very fun. <laughs> All right. You're trying to also, not a Tetris-like, but you're also trying to score like seven by seven grids. You're also trying to match uh, tiles to tiles of their kind, very similar to dominoes, but it's better because it has pictures. Mm -hmm. And if those tiles have particular, like, what is it, fish or like uh, it's a gold It's a nuggets, crown symbol, oh, crown. I think. It's a crown symbol, then you scored, uh, th that tile is worth double, and then you, 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 you like multiply them by the amount of tiles that it touches of the similar type. And then you add up your points. It's a perfect mathematical equation. <laughs> so very zen-like. I love playing it. Yes. Is it really my number 35? It is. is this a, does it surprise you that it's this yeah, high? Yeah, I thought it was like higher up. But I guess at oh, this Oh, you're surprised it's this low. Yeah. I'm Interesting. I mean, I think it's where but, it should be. <laughs> no, I, mean, I guess my number 35 nowadays is like, it used to be like my number 15. Sure. A couple of years ago. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Because I've played so many cool games that it's so hard not of to course. like... Of course. Explain it and love it. But anyway... Lily's it, very loyal to her games. I am... You also have a cool dy dynamic where you're not just drafting randomly. You draft on the order in which you picked and you went in the previous round. Yes, that's really neat. So um, so the person that has the advantage does not keep said advantage throughout the rest of the game because if they were first the previous round and they got to go, they get to go last. And so it's it's nice because, you know, sometimes the cards like line up and it's like, oh man, yeah, woo me, you know? So sometimes you got to choose between either getting a really good tile or setting yourself up to have an earlier turn the future round. Something that I've learned because I'm pretty sure I won this game. Haven't I won this game? Sure. I mean, I've won this game. I've also won this game. Several times. <laughs> okay. Especially. All sad. right. Well, speaking of these games climbing down your list it actually didn't climb down too far this oh, was yeah. actually number 22 last year so it's dropped 25, down 22. 13 13 spots that's not incredibly that's, for, it's not santiago de cuba for right? the fact you've learned over 40 new games this past year so that's not too bad have i really mm -hmm. oh my gosh that's all right crazy. all right let's move on to your number 34 my number 34 an oldie but goody, trustworthy party game that is guaranteed to get you all laughing, <laughs> to get you all in a good mood. Unfortunately, you don't need several people for it, right? Wouldn't you say that's like a minimum of four? You need... With some I think you can play at three, but yeah, four to seven. The more the you merrier. You can make more people and make it teams. The more the merrier in this game. I find it to be a really, really cool uh, party game. Most, much, much like, say anything. I'm not going to say anything about that, but much like that. Anyway, uh, this is a definitely a game that's not... I guess it could be called a board game, kind of, because there's a board. I mean, it is a party game that feels a little bit like a board game. There's some strategy to this. It's not just laugh out loud moments kind of thing. No. As a matter of fact, it's on the drier end of some of the other type of party games. But, but um, there's definitely, it's definitely not like the other ones that we've been reviewing. Sure, it definitely you know, is different. It's way yes. lighter, and sure. uh, anybody that is apparently over the age of 10 that has never touched a board game could play potentially with and weigh yours. So it, it is found in your local Target, it's found everywhere at this point. So go ahead and get yourself a copy. With and weigh yours. All right. Number 34. 34. And this game actually was number 28 for you last year. So it's dropped down about six spots. That's not too bad at Look all. At that. That's about the same. That's yeah, about exactly. The same. Around the same level. Yeah. 
So that's really, really cool. I'm happy with where it's at. All right. Probably where it's going to be. All right. <laughs> so what is your number 33? My number 33 is Pillars of the Earth. <laughs> Yay, for Pillars of the Earth. I've never read the books, but we definitely have watched the um, series, miniseries by the BBC. I believe it was put it out. Maybe it's a PVC. I don't but, know who it was, but it was it was good. It was well done. It was done. a really good series back in like the early 2000s, I would say. Early no, I think it was like 2010. 2010. 2010. Somewhere roughly around there, yeah. Did it, I'm pretty sure we watched it after we played this game. <laughs> or was it in preparation? No, no, no. We watched it before we played this game, actually. In preparation yeah. to playing it. Harry had this game there in the like, stream rack, right, for a while. And we just kept on like, okay, when are we going to play it? So to prepare mentally and emotionally for the pillars of the earth. We went ahead and watched the three video miniseries. So what is the game about? The game actually has nothing to do with the show. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, the game actually is a really cool game. Um, it has several pieces to it. But what I like to, I like the most of, is just like, it's like an amazingly well decorated board. The board is the absolutely board gorgeous. It's like the best part of this game. Yes. A beautiful board. It's beautiful. Artist Michael Menzel. Okay. Some great boards out there. Just amazing. But as you can see, in the middle of said board, there is a construction happening. Construction site where a cathedral yes. is being built. Mm -hmm. And why do you know that you get to be the one that builds it together? Every round that goes on, you put a single piece that is missing, whether it is mm -hmm. the base or the other one. Until finally, on the last round, you get to build whatever yeah. cinematic cathedral so i found that to be so cool because it, it, it like incorporates the theme in a tangible way sure and what do you know i really like touching yeah things. i mean <laughs> let's not deceive people it is simply just a round marker it really, really is just a round marker but, but it cool? again it kind of if you've watched oh, the series man. and appreciate it at all it, it makes you enjoy that so you know we get to be the master builders which also is a piece that you get to put to play somewhere in the board so the board um lets you what was it you had to you get you get to pick different different cards at the beginning of the game and then those cards let you go ahead and go to different places first so uh you can't have more than like two or three of a different kind and they let you go and either collect wood or collect uh what is the other resources that we have here you got wood you got sand and you got sand stone and stone and it plays, I guess I can't really compare it to any other game, but um, in order to collect t different cards, I guess you would need a certain amount of those resources first. But you also can just outright get the resources. You're just going to get less resources if you do it that way. Um, so anyway, I'm probably not explaining how thoroughly it could be, but yes. all to say, it looks way harder than it actually is. But if they made the board so beautiful that to make it even simpler, they made it into a clock. Yes, it's intuitive because you could just so follow the worker place and actions clockwise. You just go clockwise. So do not get intimidated by it or mm. by my really lousy explanation. Go ahead and try it for yourself. And if you want help, ask Harry, which is what he's here for. <laughs> <laughs> so Pillars of the Earth is definitely a classic. I found it to be so unique because of that whole little mechanism of the uh, marker, the round marker. Um, but it's also in the theme of the previous game that I had mentioned, like the kind of King Arthur, medieval, you know. But there is no hating, there is no, there's nothing like that, like nothing like feuding like in the movie or, any, or in the miniseries or anything like that. It is solely based on... I mean, there is a little bit of feuding because sometimes yeah. you're fighting really desperately to get those worker placement spots. Sure. I mean, you you have you the, your cards which tend to be like different <laughs> persons or whatever. Sure. And I guess uh, the master builder, as soon as he's placed, like he resets like your whole hand. So the master builder definitely gets the highest, uh, the highest, like that's the worth, the, the worthy card in the game. But it's very, very cool. I always win by collecting sand and tint. And you should try it. <laughs> Pillars of the Earth. All right, your number 33, which was new to the list this year. Let's move on to number 32. This is an oldie but goodie. Woo. I am just intimidated right now. You are. You have no idea what I'm looking at. Okay, I'm going to try to show you. El Grande. Which it's literally means El Grande. the big crazy. box. The big. <laughs> the the big. big. 
The big guy. <laughs> El Grande. I was actually asking Harry. I'm like, Harry, how many Spanish-themed games do we have? And he's like, I don't know. I think El Grande and, like, Pandemic Iberia. And Alhambra. And Alhambra, which is more Muslim and Moroccan than Spanish. But I suppose Alhambra is in Sevilla or whatever it is. We're not. I think we're not. It's in Spain. It's Spanish. It's in Spain. <laughs> it's in Spain. <laughs> Either way, this is more about Castilla de León and Castilla de Mancha. <laughs> which, if you know everything about, anything about Spain, is more about the north part. But uh, you do get to reminisce and kind of like see the configuration of the map. That Lily gets Spain. to reminisce because she lived reminisce. in Spain. I lived right here on Galicia. Right there, Galicia. And uh, it is a worker placement game. Uh, you have a tower and you have well, an... It's, actually, it's area majority. Would you say? But you place workers. Okay, it's yeah. an area majority. That's not what the worker placement definition means. But I yeah, guess. you're, you're so. placing meeples down. You're placing meeples down and you're trying to figure... You're trying to, first of all, uh, be close to the king, right? So like the king is in a particular uh, state or El Grande, I should say. A, a, a larger than life meeple is like in this particular state. And you get to move that larger than life meeple according to which cards you pick. Um, so unfortunately, if you move the larger meeple, you can, you have less available meeples to like do during the whole game. So if you move the least, uh, if you do like a least, a lesser action, then you get to place more meeples throughout the different places. So because it is an area majority, uh, it is, uh, worthy to say that you want to own as many provinces in uh, Spain as possible. And then they also have this cool mechanism, which is that tower over there. And that tower, essentially, whatever leftovers you have or you want to assign to, you can blindly, no one is looking, just place them in the tower. And at the end of the round, then you get to place them freely anywhere they you want. That's, you know, changing the balance. Maybe you do have the majority. Also, it counts as an area in itself. So it, it will score a person for the majority or maybe secondary in the in the tower itself once it's revealed. It definitely, it's definitely like a meaner game because uh, the person, you know, a person might think they're winning because they have like a lot of meeples there, but you're like kicking them out as the game goes on. Or you may also like each, each province has a um, worth, right? So it has like a, an, a, 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 an amount that that's what you're supposed to gonna score if you're going to be like the first one there. But you can change that amount, putting another one on top of it and making it less like, you know, worthless for mm -hmm. the person that's there. Um, but anyway, essentially you cannot go wrong by being where the Grande guy is. So, El Grande, a really cool game. I think, why is this the big box? I, I well, because it includes all that. the expansions. For whatever So instead reason, of having to buy the expansion separately, you got everything here in one box. I mean, I guess so. I just feel like we have such a heavy box for like Dominion and like it's not as big as this one. But I guess this one is a lighter version because it's mostly cards. Mm. So El Grande, what a great game. Yes. You guys should try it out because there are not many Spanish games out there. <laughs> and what's interesting is that this game has climbed up your list because last year was ranked number 52. Was it really? Yes. And this year was ranked number 32. So that's a 20 spot jump we played it maybe once or twice earlier this year i guess I'm or earlier last year more but fond of it now I suppose. i'm not sure maybe there was like a lapse in judgment when you <laughs> were ranking like, last you year just had no clue what you but were it's a it's a great game and yeah maybe I it was think... a lapse of judgment last year when i yeah when i like you know did not give it the place that i feel mm -hmm. like it deserves mm -hmm. i'm also feeling more spanish games lately so okay okay which brings me to my number 31 31 Spanish type game, Caribbean like thing that you may or may not like. San Juan. San Juan is the card player of another favorite of mine that uh, is ranking higher, so therefore we're not going to do it in this video. So it is the card version of Puerto Rico. And uh, San Juan, you are trying to also build um, the city of San Juan. I do not like it as much as I like its predecessor because, again, I'm very tactile and like to put little pieces down and like to do things in a map if possible but it is a game that you can take on the go because you can play kind of anywhere so i give it a thumbs up for that what do you think sure. 
Well, I personally, I think I actually like this better than its predecessor, as you say. Um, even though it, the predecessor is a classic and it's the reason why this game is even in existence, but I'm a big card guy and, and I just love the idea of the multi-purpose cards that you can use for different things. You can use them either as a resource under your building, representing a product that your production building you know, produced, or you could use it as the building itself that gives you victory points, special powers and abilities, but also is your money, right? Because building these buildings costs a certain price and you have to use the card. So it's a, the tightness, you have a, a limited hand and you have to say, well, I, I really want to build this, but I also want to build this. So I might have to give up something I really like as money in order to actually lay down this other card on my tableau and activate it. I think it's really cool, really neat incorporates some of the cooler aspects of Puerto Rico, which is the whole variable phase order where players are choosing the different roles mm -hmm. and everybody gets to carry out the action from that role, but only the active player who chose that role gets a, gets a bonus a uh, action from it. So I think that's the neatest part of Puerto Rico and that. just keeps it. Doesn't that look like Hernan Cortez? Anyway, maybe <laughs> not. No, this is like, like an 1800 Puerto Rico, not like a 1600 yeah. Puerto Rico. But, um, or six and a half, time one, I should say. Yeah, it, it, you know, I guess it did not have the same, the same effect on me as it had on Harry, but. Her mannerisms do not look like a person who's talking about her number 31 game of all time, do I they? I know, I know. <laughs> we'll see. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested on how this will rank in the future, let's just say. Another lapse in judgment, perhaps. Time will tell. Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> all right well i guess that's it for numbers 40 to 31 that's it was a fun uh, experience talking about these games and we're going to keep on talking about lily's numbers 30 through 21 next video next week so make sure to catch that this is harry and this is lily saying take care everybody stay safe stay healthy and have fun gaming bye and my number was that too early i think it was <laughs> And my number 37 is Pandemic the Cure. Because I do like to. She's in a really good mood today. I want to cure people. All right. Uh.